Welcome to Restaurant Influencers presented by Entrepreneur Media. My name is Sean Walchef, founder of Cali Barbecue and Cali Barbecue Media. In life, in the restaurant business, and in the new creator economy, we learn through lessons and stories. When we launched this show at the beginning of this year, we never thought that we would reach millions of people all over the globe. But thanks to Entrepreneur, thanks to Toast, our title sponsor, our point of sale part partner who believe in storytelling has given a restaurant owner like me the opportunity to bring on today's guest. Today's guest is none other than Emeril Lagasse. You know him. He goes by a first name basis only on the internet. That is how much influence this man has. That is how much respect he has. Multiple James Beard award-winning chef. So many restaurants, too many to count. So many TV shows. We're going to talk about his new shows that he's launching with the Roku channel. Chef Emeril Lagasse, welcome to the show. Hey, Sean. Thanks very much for having me. It's oh, such an know. honor. It's such a pleasure. I'm uh, I'm so grateful. I'm humbled. I'm honored. Um, you know, when I... When I first got into the restaurant business, I never thought there would be a time where I would be partnering with Entrepreneur Magazine and be able to spend some time with you to not only selfishly learn for myself, but also share with all the listeners, all the viewers. We're fortunate that this goes on YouTube, this goes on entrepreneur.com, this goes on podcasts. But I'd like to start with our favorite random question, which is where in the world is your favorite stadium, stage, or venue? Well, I, I'd have to be a little selfish on that, Sean, and say that uh, the magnificent Superdome in New Orleans where the Saints play would probably be my favorite. Uh, but I've been fortunate to, around the world, be in some really cool stadiums in, in London and in Portugal, et cetera. And there are a lot of great stadiums, as you know, great venues, especially, um, you know, I just got done doing this tailgating show for Roku. Yes. And when you get that football spirit, you know, and these football fans and you start seeing how diverse uh, the stadium and fans are from, you know, Dallas to, to the Giants, to the Jets, to, you know, New England, to Chicago, to, you know, the Las Vegas uh, stadium is, is, is pretty awesome. And I could keep going on and on and on, but uh, that's, a, that's a great question. So we're going to go to New Orleans Stadium. Um, we're going to convince Entrepreneur, Toast, Atmosphere, Davo. We're going to get the best sponsors together. What we like to do is, so so many people in life, they're especially restaurant owners in the hospitality business, it's so hard to work on your, instead of working in your business, it's hard to work on your business. And one of the things we try to teach on this show is, this incredible world that we live in where we have technology, the ability to tell our story on platforms like TikTok, like Instagram, like YouTube, creating content about your restaurant. So we're really good at in real life, convincing somebody, convincing an investor, convincing our significant other that we have a crazy idea to open up a restaurant. But yeah. when it comes, when it comes to telling our story, very few, you're the best of the best. You're able to turn your restaurants into media. What I want to do is go to the Superdome, put you on center stage. Everyone already knows your story. I want to know what is Emeril Lagasse? What is Chef building into the future? Ten years from now, when we look back at this event, what will you have built? Well, I, I think that I, um, uh, as a restaurateur chef, that, um, you know, the most pride that I take in is making people happy and doing that with food, doing that with service and hospitality doing that with beverage, whether it's an incredible wine list or a, 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 just an, an amazing cocktail offering. Um, so I, I, I'd like people to remember, wow, I had a really great experience when I went to Emerald's Signature Restaurant or when I went to his restaurant, Merrill, when I, when I went to the steakhouse in Las Vegas, it was incredible. The service was incredible. The food was incredible. Uh, the place was immaculately clean uh, and spotless and people were friendly and we walked out of there a little bit happier than when we walked in. That's that's great. So when we were doing the pre-production work for this uh, this episode, uh, Toby Gillette, who's on our Cali Barbecue Media team, he told me that his father grew up in Fall Rivers, Massachusetts. And huh. uh, I want to I want to bring you back there to uh, to growing up, because when I think back on my journey, I think about where did I learn hospitality? Can, can you bring was it in Fall Rivers? Where did you truly understand that hospitality was in your DNA? Well, I think that. Um, 
growing up in Fall River uh, in a very predominant Portuguese community, um, the Portuguese people have sort of this built-in uh, little key, if you will, built in them about friendliness, about hospitality, especially if they're in the restaurant business. Uh, it's it's funny you say that about Toby's dad, because uh, just a few days ago, I was in uh, St. Petersburg, Florida, doing some work, and I asked the uh, the driver if uh, if there just by any chance if there was a Portuguese restaurant in the you know around, and he said there is actually there's a place called Faldo, and it's a home Portuguese cooking. So long story short, we went there. And the guy was just amazed. And when I walked in, sure enough, when I sat down, the hospitality began to start flowing. And then I realized he was from Fall River. And, no way. <laughs> yeah, and he opened this Portuguese restaurant in St. Petersburg, Florida, from Fall River. So he and his dad, it was uh, an incredible experience. That's amazing. But getting, getting back to the direct question of what you said, Sean, and that is, is that I started off in a, uh, very young in a Portuguese bakery and the Portuguese, like I said, the Portuguese people in this particular family that I worked for, you could see even though people were coming in to buy a Danish or a donut, there was a certain amount of hospitality that went with that. It wasn't just an exchange of a bag of goods for 25 cents. There was an exchange of, of friendliness, of, of, of concern, of, smiles of just you know uh conversation uh which i i think is one of the things that we're a little bit missing right now today you know is conversation um so that might have been the first and then i went to a, a a culinary high school and started learning how to cook but also there was a certain bit of uh out of the classroom that was about hospitality about just being friendly to people and treating people the way that maybe you want to be treated. Yeah. Um, and then I went to Johnson and Wales and, you know, that's a hospitality college. I mean, that's what, uh, what they started as. And so there was a bit of that, but along the way, there were a lot of different positions, a lot of different restaurants that I worked at and chef and sous chef and cook. And, but it wasn't, I really think until I landed in 82 at commander's palace, to work for the Brennan family when I truly, truly understood what hospitality in the restaurant business really is. Because there wasn't anybody more hospitable than Ella and Dick Brennan uh, and their siblings. Um, and to see that, that I was brought in to be the chef there, but to see that it was more than just being the chef. It was more of giving people an experience. And part of that experience rubbed off as hospitality. Yeah. And so um, that's why I haven't left New Orleans, because I got that full sense, that full tank, if you will, of hospitality, of music, of agriculture, uh, architecture. And to me, it was like, OK, this is like really feeling like being at home. Um, so I haven't left. I actually moved my parents from Fall River there um, quite some years ago. And my brother now is there as well. And um, it's, uh, you know, we're, we just kind of, kind of live in the dream in a sense. And I opened Emeralds, the flagship 32 years ago. Um, it just so happens now that, you know, in this time, uh, my son, who's 20, uh, is slowly taking over the restaurant as the chef patron and certainly exuding hospitality. Not only being a great cook, it's great yeah. to be a great cook, a great chef, great cook. I just want to be a great cook. But it's an amazing thing to be able to provide hospitality and warmth to people to make them want to come back. And now a quick break from restaurant influencers to share an exciting new offer from our sponsor, Atmosphere TV. Go to atmosphere.tv forward slash BBQ to not only get Atmosphere TV for free, but also our audience is given the gift of $200 in ad credits, as well as free activation. Join more than 40,000 other venues who use Atmosphere TV by signing up with the code BBQ at atmosphere.tv forward slash BBQ. 
Keep guests entertained with Atmosphere TV because you have the ability to turn your promotions and your advertisements onto your television with this platform. The simple plug and play device lets you take control of the content on your screens. Keep guests entertained, engaged, and informed of real-time specials, career opportunities, and announcements that you can personalize within your own custom content dashboard. Tap into great channels such as America's Funniest Home Videos, Fashion, Throttle, Chive TV, Sports Highlights, Red Bull, Real Madrid, along with unbiased news and entertainment. There is something for everyone. Over 60 curated channels of short form, entertaining content to choose from right at your fingertips. They also have an incredible ad supported network that allows you to not only market within your four walls, but also locally or nationally if you desire. The platform gives you full control to dial in your marketing efforts. Please go and visit atmosphere.tv slash BBQ and let them know restaurant influencers sent you. When I think of memorable moments and being kind to strangers, you know, your show Emerald Tailgates, I'm, I'm part of an organization called the Ultimate Football, the Pro Football Ultimate Fan Association. So a lot of the, the super fans of all these teams, yeah, part of their passion is not only their team, but it's community, it's food, it's welcoming the other teams that visit from out of town, you know, and that's something that's always resonated deeply with me. And when I watch your show on Roku, Emerald, Emerald Tailgates, I see that Louisiana style, that welcoming feeling of its kindness to a stranger. And even though you're a super fan, you're literally the diehard fan for your team, the Pittsburgh Steelers, the, the Los Angeles Chargers, whoever your team is, but you still understand that it's, it's bigger than the game. Oh, no, there's no question about it. I've had, a, I've, I've had a bunch of them folks, probably a lot of them, you know, on, on the show. <laughs> I'm sure and, I, I saw the lineup. Yes. Yeah. And, and it's exactly what it's exactly what Sean, what you're saying. And they come to New Orleans. Some of them never even been to New Orleans. But what they do is they brought that spirit of their team and they brought that spirit of tailgating, whatever they tailgate. And most of them have a reason. And that reason is mostly is community. Yes. It's about giving back. It's about community. A lot of them is about children. Um, you know, my foundation is all about children. So having these super fans, as you say, which they are, come on the show is was just as just remarkable, just to, remarkable to feel that whether, like you said, whether they're from from Cleveland or whether they're from, you know, Las Vegas or whether they're from New York, whatever, just that spirit that they bring. And And, and I've had couples, I've had daughters and sons, I've had moms and dads it's just really awesome and then to really just kind of get that feedback from them that this is some of the things that we cook when we tailgate yes. yes and this is how we do it and then to have that opportunity for me to cook what i uh, my interpretation of it is just absolutely phenomenal yeah when i think of super fans and i think of the opportunity that restaurant owners have in this day and age with the smartphone in our pocket the ability to publish content about our restaurant so much of what i go and i teach restaurant owners and business owners is that you can be a super fan of your vendors you know this is something that you've been doing strategically throughout your career so many of your brand deals brand integration through the media and through the shows have been because of things that you love to use. Literally, yes. you love to use it. They see you using it and they say, hey, Emerald, what can we do together? What kind of- well, It's very true what, what you're saying because, um, you know, I, I I wouldn't do that. I never started out, Sean, to, you know, when I started doing television and I would use my products, I, it wasn't about a sales job for me. Correct. That's not what it was about at all. Correct. It was about using that product that I really believed in, whether it was an an air fryer or a piece of cookware or a regular fryer or whatever, a stock pot. It was really cutlery. It was really about what I wanted to use, not a sales job like, hey, folks, run down to your local store down there real quick and Correct. and buy this knife because I got kids that got to go to college. You know, Correct. it was really about being sincere and honest and just sharing with people about what really is the right things to do when you're doing it. 
Yeah, I think it's hard as restaurant owners to think because we're so busy trying to take care of our team. We're so busy trying to take care of our guests, trying to take care of our community, trying to figure out how to make a profit while doing all of that. But when you step back and you start to think, well, we already are creating media for social media. Why can't we celebrate the things that we're choosing to use within our restaurant? No matter whether it's U.S. foods, whether it's Pepsi, whether it's Uber Eats because we like using delivery, whatever that is, we now are in a crazy, incredible opportunity. I mean, I wouldn't literally be doing this show if it wasn't for Toast. Toast, our primary technology partner, the one that has our point of sale system. I told them that we're a barbecue media company. I told them we're going to create content. We're make a Toast unboxing video. My son is five. My daughter's three. They watch kids unboxing toys. But we made, me and my general manager, Eric, we made an unboxing video of our hardware and our software in our restaurant but that that developed a deeper relationship and you know this is something that you have done on your shows and like you said it wasn't something where you endorsed something that you didn't believe in yeah can you talk about that Uh, yeah it's just like uh this coming friday the, the 19th not to date anything uh the premiere of emerald cooks on roku yes November, November 19th, and 2022. So what you're saying, that show happens to be about relationships, whether it's the oyster guy that's doing Louisiana oysters or whether it's the two ladies that are making sake uh, with Louisiana grown rice and, and uh, w- whether it's the lady in Lafayette uh, or New Iberia or wherever who's raising water buffalo and is taking the milk from the water buffalo, making making cheese and making gelato, and then showing people how to take a roast of water buffalo, which who would, who would think that you would do that, <coughs> excuse me, but to do a roast of water buffalo, it, it, that's the kind of, it's about relationships, you know? Yes. It's not only about educating people, but it's about these relationships like you talked about that that's what it that's what it's really all about whether it's that purveyor or whether it's a sponsor like you said or whether it's your cookware maker you got to have a relationship for it to really to really work and for it to be believable so can you tell me speaking of relationships how did the relationship with roku come about well you know um i took a break a little bit from tv and then i did a i did a great show called eat the world with emma lagasi on amazon uh, and then I took a little break and then uh, all, all of a sudden I met some folks from Roku and we started a conversation and they were like, look, we're getting ready to really want to get into this cooking world. Who better than you would be to get in this cooking world? And so um, they first asked me about the tailgate show and then they were like, wait a minute. Um, what about Emerald Cooks? Kind of like the essence of Emerald. Oh, wait a minute. Why don't we just get the library of Essence of Emerald? Why don't we just get the library of Emerald Live? Matter of fact, why don't we just have an Emerald channel that people can just go on and Amazing. stream? And, yeah. and if they want to watch an old episode of Emerald Live or they want to watch a new show of Emerald Cooks, this is this could be really cool. And so that's how the relationship started and is is really, you know, evolving. Well, what I what I love is just just last night, my wife and my my son and daughter, we watched the first episode of, of Emerald Live. And in the episode, you're you're cooking squash. And when you're cooking all these different kinds of squash, you do exactly what I'm talking about and what you're talking about on this show is you're bringing the farmer's market, the man, the gentleman that runs the farmer's market. You're celebrating him in your live audience. You're literally giving him a stage where you don't need to share the stage with him, but you're doing that out of the love of your heart, out of the love of community. And I guarantee you, because of the popularity of that show and because of the content is still there, people are going to find out the discoverability part of finding out this is lessons and stories. This is how we learn of the great things. And this is how you early in your days were celebrating the local people that were literally building your restaurants. Yeah, that's what it's all about, Sean, for me. and it has been, you know, when when we were writing those shows and even the shows that we're writing right now, it's about what is the meaning? It has to have a meaning. And what is the meaning? It has to have an educational perspective as well. And it has to have some sense of love, some sense of giving back. So like you said, 
I have no problem sharing the stage. I'm honored to share the stage. And I'm honored to highlight the guy who's making this micro beer or who's making this wine or who's growing squash or eggplant or who's trying to raise these oysters and 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 how he's going about raising the oysters and about the water and uh etc so you know that's that's really what it's all about and that's how i go about creating these particular shows and this content is really it has to have it has to have meaning it has to have spirit and it has to have some sort of giving back element to it beside I education it. i absolutely love it so for somebody that's built as many restaurants as you have that's created as many shows as you have what are the similarities between creating a restaurant concept and creating a show well i think you've got to be a little bit more out of your mind creating a restaurant <laughs> and creating a show uh, and i scratch my head sometimes you're, saying, you're doing both why am i doing this again <laughs> you know i i, I said i wasn't it takes a special breed it takes right, a exactly. special breed why am i doing this again oh maybe because i learned the lesson from the last time that i you know yeah. didn't put the right pot rack up or you know it, it didn't have the right storage amount or refrigeration uh, maybe you just kind of move forward and after you learn the lesson you know so and uh, you know there there you go I'm, I'm back at it again i'm getting ready to do another restaurant with my son so it's like here we go again and now a quick break from restaurant influencers to welcome our newest sponsor to the show and that is davo sales tax davo is an incredible company i remember when we first opened up our restaurant in 2008 cali barbecue we were struggling to figure out how to automate sales tax how to have enough money in our account to file our quarterly taxes i am so grateful that now today we have found davo and they are a sponsor of the show and they are excited to help other business owners no longer have to become tax collectors davo does it all for you they take care of the compliance they take care of the collecting they take care of the filing get your first month free by going to davosalestax.com slash influencers let them know that we sent you davo is an incredible company we're grateful to have them on the show they integrate with all the top pos companies including toast davosalestax.com slash influencers automate your sales tax today and get back to running your business so take take us through what what are if somebody's listening to this and they're not yet owning a restaurant and they want to get there what are the the creative steps I would go see a psychiatrist first. <laughs> really That's probably sure the that best you, advice. I've make ever. sure that you're still walking on the same planet as us, you know, because it takes a special <laughs> breed, first of all. But answering your question, Sean, I look at it from this, this perspective when I go about a restaurant. I pick up the phone. Yes, people still have phones. Yes. Um, and I call this number. And somebody answers the phone and I'm trying to make a reservation. So how, how am I greeted? This is my, my first, my first, this is the very first thing that I'm getting. Uh, how am I treated? How, how am I being handled to make a reservation? And I make the reservation and then I really sort of pretend that I'm getting in my car and I'm driving to the restaurant. And if or not, I have valet parking, how is the reception of when I pull up to the restaurant? And how is how is that? How is that handled? And and what are they doing with my keys? And where are they putting my keys? And are my keys safe? And where are they putting my car? Is my car safe? Do they have a parking lot? Or are they trying to find some place in the middle of the street somewhere? And then how am I greeted? I walk in the door. How am I greeted? uh from this host or hostess or manager how am i greeted are, are they smiling um so if i have to wait at the bar how is that experience and what are the, what is the offering uh, and then i'm i'm seated how am i seated okay and how are the seats that i'm seated in and how how does the tabletop look is the, is the linens are they pressed are they is the silverware shining are the glasses just uh, sh shining because they're so polished and so clean and how long does it take before I'm greeted because uh, I, I if, if you're giving me more than a couple of three four minutes you, you're already getting on my nerves yeah right 
may the mind 10 minutes. And I, I as you, you and I have been, been in those places too, where you, sure. you're sitting around for about 10 minutes. You could have read the newspaper for God's sakes before you can even order a drink. Right. So how was that greeting and how was the bread service? And then I want to go to the bathroom because I want to see the cleanliness of the place. And, uh, and 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 I just kind of go through all of those steps all the way through, you know, the menu, the, the design of the menu, what's on the menu. You want to really judge a restaurant uh, pretty quickly. Order the soup, because if they're putting love in the soup that they're doing, then you know you're pretty much going to have a good experience if they're already thinking about the details of putting the love into a soup, or the bread service, or the butter, or the butter service. So I just kind of go through all of those motions all the way through to the final uh, time of paying the check and and when I exit. And when I exit, does anybody acknowledge me? Do they, do they say thank you? Do they say thanks for coming? Or they just let me walk out of the restaurant, you know, unattended. And then I got to find the valet. So I'm that's I'm constantly looking at all of those all of those things every step of the way. So when you're thinking about all the details in the restaurant business, and then you go to the details of production on the media side, does it surprise you looking back at all the media that you've done and all the media you continue to do, all the content you continue to put out there, that certain things, certain truths, certain catchphrases like BAM, that they stand out and those become memorable? Why, why are those things memorable for people? And why do so many people ask about it? I, I don't know when I started, you know, <laughs> when I, when I, I always kicked it up a notch when I was doing the essence show, which yep. was just about elevating my, my spice level using my spice. I never intended to really sell on spice. It was the people that were asking, what is that stuff? What is that essence stuff? Where yep. can I get it? And bam, Sean, between us, bam was really something that just came out. And Back then, I was doing eight shows a day because of that my is eight shows a day because of my that restaurant. Is unbelievable! Yeah, it's unheard of. Okay? It's unheard of. Eight unheard shows of. a day, live so shows as a food show. Um, you know, we would we would try to get three, four in before we'd break for lunch, and min minimum crew. You know, five, four camera people, stage manager, kitchen support staff, but basically somebody in the control room. But basically, it was a minimal staff. And so what they wanted to do is they wanted to eat the food. So we'd have a launch table, and we would eat the food. And we after doing three or four shows, we'd break for lunch. And you know, it was like, wow, OK. Uh, geez, I guess you guys didn't eat last night. But anyhow. And so we'd come back and start up again to finish the other three or four shows. And I'm, I'm losing people. Because they, they just like ate like just about everything on the table. And I'm seeing the camera guys. And so, bam, came about waking everybody up to like, can I have your attention, please? We're still we're still cooking here. The show must go on. This show's got to go on. This is the second service. It's time to go. Exactly. I love it. Well, uh, every single week on Wednesday, Friday, we uh, we hope we invite people that are listening to this show to come on the app Clubhouse. It's an audio app, but it's a community that we're building of restaurant owners, hospitality professionals, content creators. And every week we do a social shout out this this week's social shout out is going to go to Toby Gallette who's part of my team. He shows up there. Um, he also wanted to give you compliments. He said it's the greatest air fryer that has ever been created was the one that Emerald Emerald has. So um, is there anybody on your team, anybody um, that helped you with this Roku deal that you want to give a special shout out? This will be on Entrepreneur. Um, and anybody that's gone above and beyond that you want to give a little bit of a, a love to? Well, I have uh, I, I have a lot of people, but one, one person in particular, uh, is a, a young lady that works, we work together. Uh, her name is Maggie McCabe. Uh, and she's sort of like my chief officer. She's, you know, she does it all. She she wears so many hats. It's it's incredible. But I, I think between her and my assistant, uh, Jen Todd, uh, I think the two of them sort of not, not only keep me balanced, but also have been really instrumental in making this whole Roku thing happen. Then of course I have a great producer, I got a great crew, et cetera, et cetera. I got a great kitchen staff. Charlotte, my chef, is just unbelievable in her team. Um, so I'll I'll start there uh and 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 just 
those people are very, very special. Well, if anybody wants to get in touch with me, it's at Sean P. Walchef. That's S-H-A-W-N-P-W-A-L-C-H-E-F. And that's Instagram, TikTok, LinkedIn, Twitter. Um, you can find Emerald all over the internet. You can find his restaurants pretty much all over the all over the United States. How many restaurants do we have now? Uh, two in Las Vegas, two in New Orleans, uh, one in the panhandle of Florida, and one soon to be two on Carnival Cruise Lines. Amazing. One ship called Mardi Gras. I have an Emeralds Bistro. And soon next week, a second ship called Celebration. Where we'll have another Emeralds Bistro. Congratulations. That's beautiful. It's a pretty amazing to doing food at sea. It's it sounds exciting. I mean, you've yeah. elevated hospitality at sea. That's uh that's not an easy accomplishment, but congratulations. That's uh, something that people are going to definitely enjoy. Um emeralds.com that's where you can go um, we'll put links for all of emerald's social handles he's got millions of followers on twitter and you can find him on tiktok official right. emerald legacy he's putting out content on tiktok so kudos to you chef thank you so much for your time um, as you. always the audience stay curious get involved don't be afraid to ask for help chef emerald legacy it truly was an honor Thank you so much. Great. If you, have, if you ever make it to San Diego, please uh, come get some barbecue. That goes to anybody that's listening to this show. You guys my, are all the favorite, One of my favorite cities. I'll be sure to look you up the next time please, I'm out there. Please do. Please do. Cool. Um, just one last request. Can I get a Can I get a selfie? Sure. Let's do a quick Zoom selfie with Emerald Lagasse. All right. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Bam. There you go. Bam. There it is. Emerald Lagasse. And a special thank you to our title sponsor, Toast. Toast is the primary technology partner that we use at our restaurant, Cali Barbecue. It is also the primary technology partner that so many of the guests have shared with us on this show. People like Sam, the cooking guy, Stacy Poonkinney, Jeff Alexander. So many times the guests tell us that they're using Toast when we didn't even know that going into the interview. That is why we are so grateful that they sponsor this show. We want you to win. You that listen to this show, we want you to improve your digital hospitality. Toast is built for restaurants and it's built for you. Toast is the restaurant first platform that's built for your needs, whatever your size, concept or ambitions. Improve your bottom line with a customizable platform that's easy to learn, use and grow with. And it meets you where you are with all the right tools for your price point. If you have any questions about Toast, please DM me at Sean P. Walchef, S-H-A-W-N-P-W-A-L-C-H-E-F. I will get you the link to the right Toast contact in your market. It's so important that if you listen to this show, that you win. We want you to be on this show eventually. Let us know that you heard the show, you heard about Toast, you implemented Toast, you did a Toast unboxing in your restaurant. Talk to us about how you've impacted your village, your city, your community share your toast story with us dm me today to learn more and be sure to check out toast